here in the state. Plus, a customer fights off an armed robber at a pot shop in Portland. How the owner says he's been dealing with an increase in crime. Good morning. Thanks for getting up with us on this Sunday. I'm Deidre Johnson. Before we get to those headlines, let's check in with Daisy Caballero for a quick look at the forecast. Hey, Daisy. Hey, good morning, Deidre. Happy Sunday, everyone. Taking you uh, straight out to the Wells Fargo Skycam. Beautiful look at our beautiful city where it is a bit cloudy and will probably stay this cloudy for the remainder of the day. We'll start to see some more of those scattered showers uh, throughout the day today, also mainly this afternoon. And as you can see here within the last six hours alone, uh, just again, some light showers, maybe just a few traces for up and down the I-5 corridor. The most rain action that we've seen has been for parts of the coastline. Quick look at your current temperatures, 41 in Forest Grove, 44 for Tigard, for West Lynn, for Wilsonville, 41 in Happy Valley, and 44 degrees also for Salem. Now, low visibility issues, really nothing major up and down the I-5 corridor, a little bit less than a mile of visibility as we're looking at Hillsboro. Salem, Corvallis and Eugene, we are a OK. Now uh, looking at our forecasted temperatures right about noon, we're expecting to hit 50, warming up a few degrees by five o'clock, 55 degrees. But hey, we're going to be seeing another big warm up a little bit later. We'll talk about when that is coming up. All right, thanks so much, Daisy. Well, someone in Oregon is waking up this morning a billionaire. There was one winning Powerball ticket for a $1.3 billion jackpot, and it was sold here in the state. We're still trying to figure out where the ticket was bought, but you'll want to check your numbers. They are 44, 27, 52, 22, 69, and the red Powerball 9. The drawing didn't happen until early this morning after being delayed more than three hours for technical difficulties. This prize is the fourth largest in Powerball history. An important reminder for Max riders this morning, a stretch of the Max Blue Line closes today for the next week. The disruption will affect five stations between East 172nd Avenue and Civic Drive in Gresham. Shuttle buses will run every 15 minutes. Trains will also be slower between Civic Drive and the end of the line. This is so TriMet can make improvements to a rail crossing in the area. The disruption will last through next Saturday, April 13th. Developing this morning, police are looking for an armed robber who hit a cannabis shop in Portland. The owner says they've been robbed dozens of times over the last few years. This latest attempt was caught on camera. Ashley Grams shows us how a customer fought off the thief. Two employees and a customer robbed at gunpoint inside a cannabis shop on Friday night. I don't know if there's anything we can do to stop it because they're pretty bold to come in here with customers in here with a gun in their hand. Laszlo Baggy is the owner. He runs five shops, including Eden Cannabis on Southeast 12th Avenue. We close at 9 o'clock, so pretty close to that closing time. You can see the suspect enter the store while a customer is talking with two employees. The manager of Eden Cannabis walked us through what happened next. So you see the customer trying to tell them to leave, basically. And the employees are slowly moving toward a safe room as the two men fight. He jumped the counter. Staff try to lock the door, and the customer refuses to back down. And that's when the customer was throwing tip jars at him. But the tip jar wasn't enough. The customer then grabs a chair, seemingly unafraid of the man with a gun. I'm not gonna he was amazing. Throwing anything he can at the masked gunman before he's hit in the head with a pistol. I don't know what can be done except the city's just got to get a grip on what's going on here. And give us a hand. Portland police say the suspect ran and no one has been arrested. Since COVID, we've had 35 different break-ins or armed robberies. Baggy says other cannabis stores have similar problems. I have another friend who has four or five shops and he experiences the same thing. Thankfully, in this instance, no one was severely hurt. That's what worries Baggy the most. It's, it's more of them endangering or scaring the employees that are working here. That's, that's the toughest part, is the people that work here. Ashley Grams, KGW News. That store owner mentioned this being an issue at other shops as well. And just last night, we learned of another robbery, this one at Floyd's Fine Cannabis on Southeast 28th Avenue in Portland. The thief was also armed. No one was hurt in the incident, and there's no word yet on any arrest. 
A downtown Portland restaurant has closed after owners failed to pay the rent, but those owners say it was security issues that led to this point. The city of Portland ended the lease with the Buffalo Wild Wings on Southwest 4th and Morrison. The mayor's office says it comes after numerous good faith attempts to find solutions. The franchise claims they withheld rent payments until the city properly addressed security concerns. The mayor's office says this was a necessary step and is hopeful about finding another business to take the space. In an update, Oregon City Police say the suspect who damaged a historic elevator is now in custody. They've identified him as 22-year-old Evan Bedencourt. He faces a criminal mischief charge. Police say Bedencourt was caught on camera before midnight Friday, kicking the city's municipal elevator and breaking it. This is one of only four municipal elevators in the world that still operates. Oregon has officially recriminalized drug possession with Governor Tina Kotek signing House Bill 4002 last week. It makes having small amounts of hard drugs a misdemeanor starting in September. A key part of the law is deflection, which allows drug users in most Oregon counties to go into treatment instead of through the justice system. Our Evan Watson takes a closer look. Outside of one of Multnomah County's few detox facilities, Joe Bezeghi with Recovery Works Northwest talks about urgency. This is a state of emergency. Uh, there is no time to waste. People are dying. With recriminalization, Oregon counties have until September to work out their systems for allowing drug users the option to deflect into treatment services rather than face probation and jail time. This is a very short time frame to be pulling off a brand new system that has never been created before. This deflection, then diversion, then conviction with an unclassified misdemeanor, uh, this is all brand new. So we are, we are really uh, composing the symphony as we perform it here. First up, more places to treat people. Multnomah County has 95 medically monitored withdrawal management beds. 16 are here at the Recovery Works Northwest facility in Southeast Portland, which was funded by Measure 110. If we don't start right now investing in a rapid expansion of our treatment capacity. We're going to have a lot of folks getting taken to these diversion deflection centers, put on a wait list, they'll disappear back into the community. The concern is, come September, police officers may look to take drug users who want treatment to rehabilitation centers, but if there aren't any options, they'll rely on jail instead. We're full as it is. So putting every officer on the street, looking for folks that are... Uh, uh, either going to go to jail or take detox um, is going to result in a lot more calls our way. Bezeghi says Multnomah County needs a system to track capacity in real time and feed that information to officers and outreach workers. He says through House Bill 4002, reintroducing criminal penalties for drug possession could make it harder for people to get treatment. The clock is ticking for all parties to expand treatment options and work out a new system of care. We're losing dozens and dozens every month in Multnomah County to preventable fentanyl overdoses. So no time to wait. Got to do it now. Evan Watson, KGW News. Well, check this out. We're getting a closer look at a rare wildlife sighting in Eugene. A wolverine was spotted in the South Hills. The animal was captured on home surveillance and in a cell phone video. Wildlife officials are trying to collect hair samples. They want to see if this is the same wolverine spotted last month on the Oregon coast near Newport and other areas. With it running through the city of Eugene, it was quite the sight. I thought maybe it could have been a wolverine and I knew how rare that was, so I decided to run out of the house, kind of see where it was heading. This sighting where it occurred uh, is probably a once-in-a-lifetime observation, so the people that were able to see the animal should really kind of cherish that moment. Wolverines are not known to attack humans, but they can be defensive, so always keep your distance. The animal hadn't been sighted outside of eastern Oregon in decades until one was spotted last year.